Matthew 17 and in Mark 9, uh, you remember there was the Mount of Transfiguration. Uh, Jesus took Peter, James, and John up on this mountain, and he was transfigured. And Moses and Elijah appeared. And when Moses and Elijah appeared, Peter, who you know, kind of had you know, sandal and mouth disease, he was always kind of saying the wrong thing at the wrong time. Because I love Peter, because I, I can relate to him. Peter said, oh Lord, let's, let's build three tabernacles here, one to you, and one to Moses, and one to Elijah. And this cloud immediately overshadows them, and God says to Peter, this is my beloved son, listen. Listen, stop talking, listen. And Peter, of course, is you know, rebuked at that moment because there wasn't anything magical about that mountain. There was something special about Jesus. But we're always wanting to take the place where something special happened and to attribute something significant to it. This is the story now in John 4 of Jesus and the Samaritan woman. She had the same problem. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you're a prophet. Our fathers worshiped on this mountain, and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. And this has been the problem now for, for generations uh, related to spirituality. Peter thought the Mount of Transfiguration, I mean, that's where God is because, I mean, let's build a tabernacle to Him. Obviously, this is the mountain where He lives, and so let's just worship on this mountain. And, and God rebuked Peter right there. And then the Samaritans believed that you ought to worship over here at this mountain. Jesus said, lady, the, the day has come when no longer do people worship on mountains or at certain places. God is spirit. Well, what does that mean? He's everywhere. He's like oxygen. He's everywhere. God is spirit. You can't put him in a fixed place. He doesn't live in fixed places. He lives everywhere, especially where human beings are. He lives in us. Lady, you're not going to worship at that mountain anymore. Worship God in spirit and in truth. That is the kind of worship that God wants. Some people think if there's not a, if there's not a mountain, if there's not a church building, if there's not a, a certain uh, place or a cross or a, or a crucifix or, a, or a, you know, a rosary or something physical that tangibly I can hold on to and attribute God to that place, I'm not ready to worship. I'm telling you, if you're stripped naked in the middle of a field all by yourself on your worst day, you're ready to worship because God is with you. He doesn't live in places and in things. He lives everywhere. He is a common God, and He lives in common places and not in magic moments and monuments. And some people have had great experiences at camps or revivals or at certain places, and they think, well, God was there. No, He's with us. God doesn't show up in a special way at special times because He's only in certain places at special times. God shows up powerfully at certain times to remind us He's always there. I'm sure you've had some special moments in your life where you just knew that you knew that you knew that God was there. He wasn't there only because He showed up at that moment and then He went to do something else. He was there because He wanted to remind you, I'm always there. I'm always there. I tell you, the wise men were incredible people. They came to Bethlehem. No one else did. But they came to a very common place. And a common-looking child with common-looking parents, born in a very common way. And they worship. You know, it's so fun to have grandkids. They talk about Jesus, and they're still so childlike and innocent and so pure in how they, they see it. And it's just, it's just so refreshing to be reminded you know, that Christ really was a baby, you know, and He really did come to earth, and He really did live um, as a man. And, um, and he, uh, he can identify with all that we're going through. Um, I mean, you, I think that's such an important thing to always remember. Thank you for watching Marriage Today with Jimmy and Karen. Follow your interests and get social by connecting with Jimmy and Karen and the Ministry of Marriage Today on Twitter. Looking for your next great book? Start reading instantly with Marriage Today's eBooks, now available online. 
Become a rock solid partner today and equip yourself with the tools you need for a successful marriage. $14, $28, or $56 per month. Choose the partnership level that's right for you. Become a rock solid partner today.